no time for a lot of questions and discussions. I'm going to leave to up to the presenters. If you want to leave, if you want to entertain questions, we need to have your total time limited to what's what's allocated, so we stay on time. But in the mean in the meantime, if you'll please put your questions in the chat, and then if we don't get a chance to answer them, we'll we will get back to you. Um, let's see here. My first take on the network that we have built here, this is a, we're not done yet, but that we could use a little more diversity. And so uh, if any of you have, if that's occurred to any of you, uh, that's a, an area that we're going to work on. I would, I, I'm going forward from today, I'm hoping to put together a small steering committee to help me with, because I've been doing a lot of this myself to date, getting all this uh, set up. And I, unfortunately, I do have a life outside of uh, province eight. And so if anybody has a, a willingness to help, to be a, maybe a part of that, please either put that in the chat or send me an email. You've, got, you've all got my email address and, we, and um, we'll talk further about that. Uh, just one more thing, um, and I think I'm going to address this primarily to bishops. I'm I'm just seeing what we have. We have. I know. Oh, Bishop Rickle is coming. I know, but we may be here later. We have six dioceses that we have. We have six ways to Sunday. Tried to get someone to respond to us, and we just cannot get through this iron wall. Those six dioceses, and I'll say them twice here are um, Alaska, Arizona, Idaho, Utah, Navajo land, and Nevada. And I'll say them again. Alaska, Arizona, Idaho, Utah, Navajo, Navajo land, and Nevada. If any of you have a contact, have somebody that would actually answer your email, uh, please, uh, maybe you could just shoot me, um, Bishop Bruce, an email or, or a, something, a text on my cell phone or something. As I, we really, we would like the entire province to be represented on this network and um, uh, believe it's possible, but we need some help. <laughs> so. The province eight bishops are meeting tomorrow. And so um, it's a, if you, if you send me, if you send me what you want me to say to them in terms of, you know, this is, this is why this, you know, just give me some talking points. I'll be glad to either bring that up tomorrow in the meeting or call each of these bishops and get them to put somebody on this. Perfect. Perfect. And by, and, and Bishop Bruce, the accent is on diversity. You know, for example, Navajo land, we'd love to have a, an indigenous, uh, some representation for, from that. So, but right now we're just interested in, 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 in folks. Thank you for that offer. I will send you something after this meeting. Um, I don't see on, uh, that's it, I think, I don't see on the call the individual that we were going to have do an opening prayer. Is there anyone who would be willing to offer us an, uh, offer an opening prayer for us? The Lord be with yeah. you. And with you. Thank you. Gracious, gracious and holy one, we give you thanks for this time together. We give you thanks of calling us to this good work. Lord, as we try to live into your economy, your way of loving and living, keep us ever mindful. Keep us ever mindful of the great differences between our diocese. But Lord, even in that, even in our differences, we're still called to serve you to give generously of our time, talent, and treasure. All this we ask and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Bruce. So leading off on the agenda, uh, my dear friend Warren Wong, it sounds like he's that to some others of you on this call. We, uh, uh, Warren probably needs no introduction. Uh, he, uh, in addition to being the president of Province 8, uh, he's also an esteemed deputy member of the uh, Diocese of California uh, Deputation to General Convention, a senior member. He's on the Executive Council for the National Church and a long list. Uh, I, I don't want to embarrass him too much, but Warren uh, and I talked about this network 
uh, a couple of years back uh, about building it, and he asked me to basically to to do this. And so uh, I thought we'd take a few minutes as we uh, before we even we go around and get acquainted, and to, just to listen to Warren a little bit about his vision about where we are, uh, where we might be going forward. Warren, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron, and I appreciate it. Um, first of all, let me tell you that my first, before I got involved in general convention and in province and all this stuff, my first ministry at a diocesan level was in plan giving. Um, and it was a quirky type scenario where some people knew I did real estate and I did some valuation and they needed somebody to um, come in and help because the gift, the, uh, the, the diocese received a gift of real estate that had a, a closely held business in it. And they were, chose to do, deal with in terms of selling it, but they didn't know what it was worth. So I said, I'd be happy to help you out. Let me know how I can do, and I'll take, do some research. And my background is in investment analysis and due diligence. So I was able to do that. And in the end, they said, you know, you have a lot of skills that we don't have in, the, uh, in our plan giving department. Would you mind joining the commission? I said, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Let me know how I can help out in a little bit. And then I did that for, I think, how many years? about 18 years and chaired the commission for the last 12 years. And, um, but one of the most interesting stories I want to share is the networking I grew, I had a chance to meet with many professionals and bring them to the table and have them some discussions. And I learned a lot. And I also felt that there was a lot we could share with one another, especially in terms of, um, how to approach stewardship and plan giving and always kind of tying it to the sto a story. So the story quickly was that piece of real estate we received was a laundromat in San Francisco where the lady met the plan giving officer at Bank of America and he needed some quarters to put into the meter so he could park his car because he had to go to a meeting. Well, she was depositing all her quarters from the washing machine there. And that striked up a conversation. Oh, what are, where are you from? What could domination? Oh, I'm an Episcopal. Oh, I was baptized an Episcopalian in Nebraska. And so the interesting thing is they built a relationship. Later on, when she did realize her son was dying of AIDS, the Episcopal church was there and was pastoral towards her family and her son at the time. And she remembered that and she donated the real estate to the Diocese of California. And much of the funds is what we created the endowment to, plan, to finance the plan giving office. So that's part of the story. And we use this story in our Diocesan Convention because we were giving out an award every year at Diocesan Convention. It was called the Margaret Wasser Award. And the award was for the parish or institution in the diocese that has done the most over the past year in developing a, a, a policy and a program around plan giving in their congregations. And to tell you the truth, that's when things started taking off because we found that rectors were competing to get that award. Mm -hmm. And then later on, as time went by, we end up doing our legacy society, a diocesan legacy society. And people signed up for that. And we basically had about a thousand members in that Bishop Society. And um, it was a wonderful opportunity to grow and to learn. And I think it's a good, this is what I wanted to share and have it as a larger network amongst the 18 dioceses in province eight, I think there are people, there are clergy who sometimes want to do things like development in fundraising and bishops, new bishops. It's always about asking the question for the money. And I'm hoping that, you know, having some good lay people and some professionals around will make that possible. So that's the vision that I, 
I felt was necessary to share beyond the boards because not all the diocese have a designated plan giving officer or development officer like the Diocese of California. So this is what I wanted to provide. And that's why I wanted, I asked Ron to take on this role. And that's a bit, bit of the background and vision what I, I wanted to share with you this, this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So is there any questions I'd be happy to, to answer, but the, that's the, the premise behind why I felt this was necessary to develop, okay? Ron? Thank you. Introduce. Thank you, Warren. Thank you. Um, no questions from my end, but thank you for, for, for leading us with that off with those thoughts. Um, all right. Good, good. I, I love meetings that were a couple minutes early so far. Let's try to keep it that way. Uh, th for the next section, and I think I said in an email at some point that the the main purpose of today is to get acquainted, to kick off and get acquainted. And so for this next for this next uh, portion of our of the meeting, um, it's a time to go around, and if you will, play, I'll I'll kick it off, and then and I'll and then I'll just choose someone, and then from there, as we're going around, if when you're finished, if you would invite someone else, I'll, I'm going to keep try to keep track here of who's spoken and who hasn't. Uh, if you would just if you would do a couple things uh, dur uh, during that time, uh, if if you would give us a sense of. Uh, of um, let me see here of of what who you are what you do in your diocese tell us a little bit about yourself but specifically if you have uh, training skills passion for one of the items named on this so, so for, for if you've really got heavy stewardship background or heavy uh, plan giving background I'm especially interested if, if if someone's on here with endowment background or or has some expertise in the area of grants, for example, which we you know so many people don't know anything about. So I'll just mention those, and then secondly, one or two things: what could this network be working on be focusing on would be most helpful to your diocese? We'll we're going to keep track of these comments. Uh, Peter, you help me out here. <laughs> Uh, and and Davy, as you're able, we're going to keep track of these so that we, the steering committee that we talked about, can come together and see about what we can focus on as we're beginning. If you have, if you want to have us know about pronouns that you prefer, please say that then, or or put it in the chat, whatever you like, and we'll try to. We're gonna we're working on a spreadsheet that we'll share with all of you, a networking spreadsheet that will have all this information so that you can use that to further get acquainted with each other on your own as you as you're able and as you are willing so i'll i'll kick off here um you know my name you know that i'm from the diocese of california we hear it's about to be changed to the bay area to clarify things but i uh what i do i'm a longtime member of the congregation at grace cathedral uh, i do visit congregations throughout DialCal. In fact, I'm, I do that more often than I attend, attend my own. Um, I am an alternate member of the Deputation to General Convention. I'm currently the president of the Board of Trustees for the School for Deacons. And um, let's see, I, um, I think I'll stop there. But I want to say, what, in terms of what I, what I dream, one of the things that I dream is that we once we are fully, once the network is fully built out to all of the dioceses, we're not in, going to include Taiwan for now, but everybody else, that we will truly become a, a network that knows each other, that talks to each other, that, uh, that we feel like we can rely on each other, and that we, and that we know that there's a value in sharing, because in, because at sharing, in, in sharing, we are as 17 or 18 or 19, however you want to count the, the, the province, we are stronger in total by what we share with each other. So that's kind of my, my dream and my hope going forward. Let's, uh, how about uh, Bishop Bruce? 
Hi, I'm, I'm Diane Jardine Bruce. I'm Bishop Suffragan here. I just celebrated my 11th anniversary of um, consecration. Um, and I collaborate fully with three of the other members on this call, Rachel Nybeck, Michelle Rackison, and Davy Gerhardt. Uh, we have partnered together as part of our stewardship campaigns uh, to um, develop a better stewardship philosophy. Um, I've been involved with stewardship ever since I was ordained 23 years ago. Before that, I spent 17 years as a banker. Um, so uh, I, I have a, a good knowledge of stewardship and have successfully uh, held campaigns over the years and consulted with others on how to get them get their stewardship uh, on track. Um, I would, as I'm going to be calling on these other um, other dioceses, I would like to add Taiwan in there, uh, just because. Um, well, I, uh, I'm in charge of multicultural ministry, what we used to call multicultural ministry, which we now refer to as new community. Um, I do speak Spanish, I do speak Mandarin. Uh, and so, and the bishop there is a good friend of mine. So I would think it would behoove us, even though they might not be able to be on these calls because of the time difference, to at least um, uh, let them know what we're thinking about and get them involved in the conversation. Uh, and I would like to invite, uh, a person I haven't seen and talked to for a long time, Kirby. Hi everyone, thanks uh, Bishop Diane. Uh, until probably about maybe six weeks ago, I was CFO at, in the uh, uh, Diocese of San Diego, but I wanted to return to parish ministry. So now I'm in the beautiful city of Vista, which is North County, San Diego. And um, while I was CFO, uh, we were in a transition. When I first came on board three years ago, uh, our Andrewship was uh, Catherine Jeffrey Shorey. And then uh, we elected a new bishop, uh, uh, Susan Brown Snook. That just occurred to me. We had three names for both of our bishops. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so she's been with us since May of 2019. And the stewardship and development area has been kind of in transition. Time, and I know Bishop Susan uh, has some definite ideas on how she wants to handle that. And I told her that I'd be happy to continue with the committee uh, uh, while she's deciding that. So that's kind of the uh, function that I have at this time. I want to be able to lay information on to uh, Bishop Susan. So uh, we might take uh, a similar road as in the past, or we might not. But I wanted to make sure that we were represented here and uh, personally, I've been interested in uh, stewardship for a while. I used to be the vicar of two different mission parishes, and we uh, had several different uh, types of approaches for stewardship in the past. And um, I did attend, uh, there was a TENS conference in Salt Lake City. I was part of that uh, a while ago. But uh, as far as specific interests, uh, it's kind of widespread. Uh, I used to work for other nonprofits, and we did do a lot of solicitation for grants, both governmental and private grants. So I'm familiar with the process of how that works. Uh, but I think that there's a lot of opportunity for us. And uh, my big thing is tying in mission and uh, ministry into stewardship. People have to be really motivated to give to the church because there's so many different opportunities for them to give otherwise. So I will wrap that up and I would love to hear from Michelle Rackerson. Hello and thank you. Um, it's nice to be here. So I'm Michelle Rackerson. I'm the CFO of the Diocese of California. And um, I, um, most of my career has prior to um, being ordained was working in big accounting and did a lot of um, tax work and um, um, some auditing, but but tax was my love, and I spent probably 20 years doing that. It was a lot of fun. Um, my experience um, with stewardship is both at the um, parish level and the diocesan level, and I really have to do a shout out for TENS because my most successful, our most successful um, parish stewardship campaigns were using the TENS material, so I've been very, forever grateful for TENS. And I think that's about it, so I'd like to invite Patricia. Patricia, you're on mute, I think. You'll have to come off mute. Thank you. 
and I'm losing my voice, so I'll, I'll project. Um, I'm a member of St. John's Episcopal Church in Lodi, Samakin Diocese, and at the diocesan level, I'm on the Commission of Ministry, and I really don't know what uh, the diocese or Samakin County has regarding stewardship. As you know, we have a very checkered background. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I haven't talked with the bishop to find out what they have been doing uh, differently. Uh, I'll speak from my experience on a parish level. Uh, I have worked on our stewardship program and we were involved in putting together uh, a network for plan giving, uh, which I feel is vital for uh, parishes and for dioceses, of course. And our uh, committee got um, changed and we never got it off the ground. I participate with two other nonprofits with planned giving. And so I'm familiar with the, uh, the protocols and how they do it. But I'm personally very interested that the churches, the parishes do have a, a system of some kind for those who want to do it and to have that information uh, catalog in the parish. Uh, many times people, well, it just happened here at St. John's, um, we've lost a uh, few parishioners and, you know, the discussion in the office was, did they leave us anything? Uh, nobody had any idea whether it was set up or not, not that we were counting on it, but it does need to be a formal, I believe it needs to be a formal procedure. So that's why I'm, I'm interested in this networking. Thank you. And I'll call on uh, Peter Pereira. Peter is not. You're on mute, Peter. Hi, I'm the CFO and treasurer of the Episcopal Diocese of Hawaii. I've been doing my job for 30 years, just celebrate 30 years working for the diocese. Uh, my background is in public accounting. Uh, I work for Price Waters and Coopers. Uh, I, I do plan giving on a very part-time basis, maybe one day a month. Uh, so 10 years ago, I set up a legacy society and uh, over the 10 years I've been adding people. I just made 130 people. Uh, 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 Ron, do you want us to go through our issues and hopes now or later? Yeah, if you would go ahead, if, if yes, we'll, uh, and if we have time, we'll go back in case people have forgotten that we'll go back. Okay. But yes, if you will mention that as well. And by my, the way, Peter, yeah, my experience with tuition and plan giving is people just don't reach, reach out for existing resources. Uh, somehow they just don't tap into existing resources. We have a lot of resources with tents and ECF. And for some reason, people don't reach out to resources. So I've, I've done training. I've invited Jim Murphy on trainings uh, two or three years in a row train people, but they just don't tap into resources. And they, that's the one issue. The second issue is people are just not comfortable in asking. Uh, you know, for me, just do it. Just ask people for money. And, and I, I, I think people are not comfortable by asking is because they themselves are not giving at the level they should be giving. And secondly, they lack stewardship formation. Uh, and that's the key reason. So my hope, my hope is that I, I, I hope that people will understand and appreciate the need to give. Uh, our Lord himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. And that, the other hope is, I hope clergy, bishops, and lay people will just do it. When I say just do it, just ask, you know. People are just not comfortable asking. You are, if you don't ask, you don't get. And you got to, you got to start somewhere. But that's my hope. Peter, I'm... I'm Peter, b before you move on, I'm assuming that you're going to you're you're going to be representing both Hawaii and Micronesia. Can they, you just confirm that? Yes. Thank you. Yes. And I'll call upon Davy. Thanks, Peter. Uh, my name is Davy Gerhard. Uh, Warren talked about the Diocese of California having a plan giving and stewardship officer. That's my role. Uh, I have been on Bishop Mark Andrus's staff for almost eight years uh, in that role, raising money for the diocese and our 80 congregations. 
I also um, am the executive director of TENS, the Episcopal Network for Stewardship. I'm so excited to hear so many of you have positive experiences with the TENS materials over the years. I'll be talking more about them later, so I won't spend any of this time uh, chatting about those, but um, in later we'll, we'll cover more. Um, I'm excited about this network in ways that we can share our expertise and our wisdom. Um, a lot of this effort doesn't have to be done in a, at a diocese per diocese level. We can combine some things and look at things more regionally when we're talking about um, grant applications and when we're talking about uh, you know, big, big projects where we could collaborate. Uh, let's, let's, let's break down some barriers and um, start talking about ways that we can raise money across our diocese that um, serve, serve the church in bigger ways. This is uh, exciting work to me and uh, I, I like it a lot. Um, let's see, Brendan. I don't know you, and so let's hear about you. Thanks, Davey. Uh, I'm Brendan Varnock. I'm the rector at St. Francis uh, in Wilsonville, Oregon, which is about 20 minutes south of downtown Portland. And um, I was an investment banker for 20 years before ordination, primarily as a research analyst. So here in the diocese, I serve on the Board of Trustees and on our Investments Council with my good friend, Mike Penfield, who's also joining us from the diocese. And um, I have a real interest in the theology of money. I just finished a doctoral thesis on financial leadership as congregational leadership. That I think for many clergy, they aren't really all that experienced with money. They're sort of intimidated by it. And that really just learning how to start theological discussions of money is a really big opening for all of this work. And so it's something I continue to be interested in and uh, I'm working with church publishing and there'll be two books on this coming out, one on financial leadership at the end of the year, I mean, rather financial anxiety at the end of the year, and then one on financial leadership about a year from now. And uh, I'll invite my friend, Mike Penfield. Thank you, Brendan. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, hello everybody. Um, I had the great pleasure of serving with, with uh, Brendan on Diocese of Oregon Trustees, uh, Chair of the Investment Committee. Um, I'm a chairperson of the Episcopal Church Foundation uh, in New York. And uh, my day job for most of the last 30 years has been, um, I started a team at US Bank called the Charitable Services Group. And we managed endowments and plan giving and managed private foundations for nonprofits around the country. So it's been my passion and my vocation for forever. And um, my uh, fondest hope with this group um, and others is to make um, giving a bequest to the church as, as normal as signing up for annual stewardship. It's just what we do. And, um, and I am appalled candidly about over the years of seeing really good Episcopalians they take care of the art museum, their universities, bless them, um, but they forget their parish. Sometimes they forget, and they forget their diocese. So um, I just wanna make that, um, my fondest hope is to make that a, a normalized event where we all leave a bequest just as part of what we do. Thank you. Um, let's see who has not gone. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you haven't gone. Thank you. Um, John? Hi, my name's John Collins, and uh, I'm an associate priest at Church of the Transfiguration in Sisters, Oregon, um, in the Diocese of Eastern Oregon. Now, listening to all of you from the Diocese of California, let us just say the Diocese of Eastern Oregon is just about the polar opposite. We are, we have maybe 2,500 communicants in the whole diocese, which comprises two thirds the, the land mass of the state of Oregon. Uh, we're under-resourced both in terms of finances and in terms of, of uh, personnel. Um, 
I, uh, about three or four years ago, is, is one of the diocesan representatives attended Project Resource. I don't know how many of you have done Project Resource. It's, uh, it's a, a program of, of the Episcopal Church. So I came back from that and implemented, I'm, 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 the, I'm the clergy person basically in charge of, of stewardship. So we implemented, um, actually we implemented a, a good number of their recommendations combined with um, the largest parish in, in, in our diocese is Trinity Episcopal Church in Bend. Uh, and they were utilizing uh, Herb Miller's New Consecration Sunday. So I've combined a bit of the, those two approaches, but long story short, the first year that we implemented some of these provisions, our stewardship increased dramatically. And so we were not able to do it this last year because we were essentially shut down and our results were, were down. Um, so we're looking forward to hopefully resuming what we normally do um, uh, this fall. I'm, I, I have a great interest in planned giving. Of course, the, the project resource covered the, the three major levels of giving, um, uh, uh, annual giving, planned giving, and um, I don't know what they call it, but um, you know, special, special appeals for pro project appeals. And so we really, we really would love to, to, I would love to learn more about how to, to um, expand uh, our planned giving because we really haven't done much about it. So who else is not talked? Rachel. Rachel. Hi, Rachel Nyback. I am the rector at St. Cross in Hermosa Beach, which if you have ever flown into LAX, I'm about three cities south. And Patricia Phelan, you have Peter Ackerman, who I knew when he came out of LA, I believe is your rector. So glad to meet someone from Lodi and John Collins. I am totally outing you to Herb Miller that you have changed a dot, a jot or a tittle in Consecration Sunday, which you know is clearly verboten when you've read all of his works. Good for you, I love it. Um, might've done the same myself. So, um, I uh, grew up as a priest kid, and I watched my father have that anxiety around stewardship every year, and it, it generationally was passed to me, and my boss at the time nipped that in the bud, sent me off to be trained with Indiana School of Philanthropy, and I came back loving development. It's my side, it's not a side hustle, but it's, it's kind of my other passion that I dabble in. Um, I am, I've done four capital campaigns. So capital can't, you all are playing givers. I have no game in playing giving. I was just on a meeting before this talking about how I need to work on that. I'm really great with the capital campaign uh, with coaching people through the process. I am not a, um, I, I don't do them. I mean, I've done them within my parish and I've sat on executive committee, uh, but I'm not a consultant. Uh, so I am fascinated with how we give. The Whoever made the comment about how we'll give to the art museum and universities, I sit in a parish where that is exactly what's going on and I realize I need to up my game in playing giving. Um, so I think that's about it for me. Here's what I would say, um, and I'm totally gonna out my, show my cards and Bishop Diane Davy and Michelle can, um, get on me about that. But one of the things I would love to see is that in the Diocese of LA, the four of us know each other because we offer regular online webinars on different pertinent topics. And so I assume, Ron and Warren, when I got this from you, that we were looking at doing that on a provincial level, which I clearly, the knowledge is in the room. Uh, but we break up into smaller groups and, and figure out what we need to do. And then at the end of every one, uh, send out a little thing that says, what, what else do you want to know about? What do you need to know about? And that helps shape our next set of four to six offerings. Um, and I know that because I'm the one who sets up the survey monkey. 
So um, I'm excited to see this on a broader level and us to reach across uh, diocesan borders and to actually support each other in the process of wider development. And I think, Peter, you have not gone, am I correct? Good afternoon. My name is Peter Huve, and I'm with the Diocese of Northern California. My home parish is St. Mary's in Napa. Uh, I spent 30 odd years in corporate accounting and finance. I'm retired now, and uh, uh, my interests involve um, being able to improve our collaboration across all boundaries, whether they're uh, parishes within a deanery, uh, diocese across the province, so we can share information. My experience with nonprofits, whether they're secular or faith, is that uh, usually the local CEO always knows best, and it's and and to be able to collaborate with others. Uh, understand best practices, share best practices, shares experiences, I find has improved our sense of community and, and our organizational behavior. So uh, specifically, I agree with everything that people have mentioned in terms of improving and implementing legacy plan given programs uh, improving uh, endowment management practices, uh, particularly improving our understanding of ESG issues and how that impacts our investment policies. Um, because I think those are areas where uh, many of us or many of our institutions can improve. I am especially thrilled to see the enthusiasm especially I believe it was Michelle Rakusen who, who mentioned her background in tax and audit and accounting and, and the enthusiasm she brings. So I want her to know that, you know, you're not the only passionate accountant out there. You know, my background is accounting. So uh, we're, we're, we're not droll bookkeepers. We bring passion to what we do and we're data driven to, to support the message that, uh, tie in ministry and mission to the ask for funds, I think will radically improve how much better our parishioners uh, will think. I've tried to uh, coin a phrase when we talk about legacy given at our parishes. Uh, we don't want all your funds, but when you do your estate plan and think of your parish as your favorite niece or nephew, uh, take care of your family first, include all those institutions that were important in your life that helped you lead a blessed life. And some of those institutions are your parish and, and, and other faith organizations. So if we can do that and share the, the intellectual uh, wealth across borders so we're not reinventing the wheel and we can develop some consistent messages, uh, that, that's my goal. Bishop Rickle, uh, thank you for joining us. I noticed that you've come on a short time ago. We have just been going around doing uh, introductions and um, and so your timing is perfect, although you will have to catch up with you on um, on the background of these folks. but we're just we're asking people a couple of areas. One, if there's in, in, in saying whatever you want to say about yourself, but it, it's somewhere buried in there if you can, uh, talk a little bit about areas of ex particular expertise that you have training passion in the in the title of this network, uh, whether it be stewardship or plan giving or whatever. And then if you have one to two particular items, the things that you dream about, hope hope that this network will address that will especially help your diocese. We'd love to hear that. Uh, I have no expertise. I don't know why I've been asked to be at this meeting, but uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, I'm Greg Rickle. I'm the Bishop Diocesan of uh, the Diocese of Olympia, which is Western Washington State. Uh, we reorganized uh, about a year ago, and I 
took on the title of Bishop Diocesan and Chief Steward and uh, pretty much moved into uh, overseeing stewardship and development, uh, mostly because it's a deep passion I have. And uh, we felt like instead of looking for someone else, it would make sense uh, to put it into this office. And I was uh, remembering Terry Parsons of blessed memory who used to say to me all the time, I'm waiting for the first bishop to change their title to chief steward. And so um, I tried to make her happy in heaven by uh, adding that to my title. So, uh, yeah, I mean, my dream would be that we'd have a more, um, it, as a province and as a church, a more uh, robust, uh, uh, what shall I say, curriculum, uh, foundation, formation around stewardship. Uh, and it's still one of the things we least want to talk about in the church. And I'm always uh, hoping to change that. So I used to do a lot of consulting around the country. I do less of that now, but I still do some of it and uh, do more of it in the diocese uh, currently. So I'm really thankful for the people that pulled this group together and that we're uh, trying to get this off and running and want to help it every way I can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, great beginnings. Um, we have a couple minutes here on the agenda. If anyone missed the opportunity to share what, uh, what your hopes and dreams might be around this I'm going to add one to what I said earlier, and that is um, something about what has the pandemic taught us when it comes to uh, stewardship, plan giving, if anything, or what should it be teaching us? I know that um, I know that because I visit pair of other congregations so much, it's something that I feel called to do. I'm amazed at how creative our congregations, at least those of them here in the, in the Bay Area have gotten about fundraising, about stewardship during a pandemic. And so I'm just wondering whether there are lessons learned going forward. We know that, that live streaming is not gonna go away just because we're returning to in-person worship. And so maybe we can look at that a little bit. This network can look at that as to how do we not only raise money face to face, but but raise it in a virtual environment. Anyone else have something that you forgot to say or want to add? Yeah, uh, Ron, I did. Uh, I wanted to uh, touch on something that Bishop uh, Bruce had said. Uh, much as in LA, although to a smaller degree, we're looking at expanding out beyond just a mainly Anglo uh, congregants and specifically uh, Spanish speaking and uh, Asian speaking, uh, Asian congregations. Uh, what I have found though, is that some of the material that we have, even though it's translated into Spanish is not culturally relevant uh, to Spanish speakers. Uh, I applaud uh, TENS for providing that, but a lot of the concepts that we were dealing with were not really relating well to those people who speak Spanish as a, a native language. And I know this is a difficult thing because it's not just one culture, you're talking about lots of different Spanish speaking cultures. But um, uh, I, I was the head of a congregation, a, a bilingual congregation and the church I moved to, the bishop asked me to develop a Spanish speaking congregation here as well. So uh, just dealing with it on the uh, relatively short time that I have, it, it's, it's a very difficult thing to, uh, regarding stewardship in a different cultural uh, uh, basis. Thank you. Um, and and Thank Kirby, you. I want to just jump, I want to jump on that too. Um, you're right. So what we've done in our team is actually had a, 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 a rector of a Spanish only speaking congregation uh, who has successfully launched stewardship there to actually write out um, what he did. And so we're going to be having that as an offering fairly soon. Uh, and then uh, again, Davey is part of that. Michelle is part of that. Rachel is part of that. Um, and then the other one is we're developing one uh, from a Korean perspective uh, that'll be done in Korean with translation. 
Uh, so the Spanish one will be in Spanish, but with translation. So if you're an Anglo speaker or an English speaker, you can listen. You 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 can listen and learn. Um, and so we're quite we're quite aware of that, um, and have jumped on it this year. So thank you for saying that. So I'll be sending it down to you, Kirby. Um, and so, so, and then the other thing I forgot to mention is I am secretary to the House of Bishops and like Bishop Rickle, I serve on the church pension fund board as a trustee. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Uh, I wanna mention that there is one uh, individual that, that has signed on to be a part of this network who I, unless I'm missing something I don't see today uh, the Reverend David Walker uh, from the Diocese of Spokane. And so we'll, uh, I'm thrilled that, <clears throat> that this large a percentage of that group that everybody else would have, was able to somehow make time. And although it's not your time yet, I wanna welcome uh, Bill, Bill McHugh and I see that you popped on. Uh, Bill is a member of the, uh, the interim body, the, the theology of money, the interim, uh, task force of general convention and he's going to talk to us a little bit in a few minutes but welcome bill thanks for making time to to join us today um, if you have additional items that we don't have time for here again either put them in the chat uh, email us um, and uh, and let us know so that we can include that some really good stuff thank you for for being willing to share that uh, so moving on here, uh, Davey, as you most of you know already know, and he mentioned earlier, Executive Director of TENS, thought we would spend a little bit of time and have Davey give us uh, a little bit of an update. What's what's happening with TENS? Where are you? And, um, and uh, look forward to you sharing. Davey, thank you. Thanks for the invitation uh, to be on this group and to talk about TENS. I love talking about TENS. Many of you uh, have served uh, on the TENS board or used our materials. And so you are very familiar with it. And I thank you for your work over the years to make us who we are. TENS serves uh, all Episcopal churches and uh, congregations in the Anglican Church of Canada uh, to provide resources, training and support for, uh, for stewardship. We mostly focus on pledge campaigns and fundraising. Although in 2020, uh, we realized we needed to step it up and offer webinars on fundraising in terms of um, virtual events, in terms of planned giving, uh, and of course in virtual formation for stewardship and small groups. So uh, to that end, uh, TENS has become a webinar machine and we've created a whole bunch of them uh, and you can find them on our website the ones we've already done and the ones that are coming up and they are free all of you are tens members your diocese are so thank you for that you've got access to the goods and that's great i'm going to share my screen and go through a really brief slide presentation that talks a little bit about the materials that we are going to be releasing for this year's uh, campaign. They're all about to uh, hit our website. They will be done on June 1st. They're being, they've just been translated into Spanish and they are being designed now. Our theme this year is every perfect gift. And it comes of course from James 1.17, uh, all generous acts and every perfect gift comes from God above. And we use as our theme, the transformation and the transformative movement from chrysalis to butterfly. This idea that our gifts of time, talent, and treasure are transformed when we push them through the church, when, when the church uses them and turns them into mission and ministry, which serves and changes the world. So we are appreciative of that. And that is the theme around which this year's materials hang. You can access them on our website, tens.org annu uh, slash annual pledge campaigns and the password James117, so you never forget that verse, uh, is right there for you. This year, uh, as all years, we create our, our materials in English and in Spanish. That gets us, uh, as was pointed out earlier, 
uh, it, Kirby, I think, said it, it gets us half the way there, right? We provide the materials in Spanish, but the context, how to actually implement them and culturally, uh, we're working uh, with uh, Bishop Bruce and the Diocese of Los Angeles. Really excited to see what they've got uh, cooking up and how that will help the church be able to communicate uh, stewardship themes uh, across cultural lines as for Latinx congregations. Thank you, Bishop Bruce, for calling that work out of your diocese and for sharing it with a needful church. We are ready for it. Uh, this year, we will provide seasonal reflections, and those are uh, on the big feasts of the church. We issue um, that you can create sermon starter from it or a presentation, a Zoom coffee hour. Uh, they are 300 word reflections that have some questions after it, and they bring stewardship themes out of our big seasonal feasts. We have a timeline. Uh, it helps congregations, whether they are adapting our resources, we provide everything in Word and in PDF, so you can print it off and run it or virtually send it out and save the paper. Uh, or you can alter it in Microsoft Word and change, change it. We do encourage it. This is not new Consecration Sunday. You may change our jots and our tittles and uh, make it into the program that, that fits your congregation. So uh, we provide it in both ways. Uh, we've got customizable uh, pledge cards or intentions to give uh, and all of the art uh, for you so that you can use it uh, to create posters, to do your website, to uh, put it on. And all of that's in English and in Spanish. That's a little list of our seasonal reflections. Um, so far, and they are up on our website, um, the Pentecost one, still time to download it, uh, learn all about helpers and haircuts from the very Reverend Matthew Woodward, Dean of Trinity Cathedral in Sacramento. A little uh, note, we do sample letters um, so that you don't have to recreate the wheel. Uh, you can uh, adapt these to your congregational setting but we give you the language and the tools so that if you are sending out uh, letters at the beginning of your pledge campaign, one from the clergy, one from your wardens and one from your uh, campaign chair. Uh, so we give those to you, put your own logo, put your own uh, stationery around it, create your own content, but we give you a whole bunch of ideas and ways to do that. Our website has uh, changed this year. If you are haven't visited it since uh, April, uh, since February, come and see. It is uh, designed to give you better access to our resources and to our webinars. If you look at our resource library, it's full of decades of material written by some of the people who are on this call. Uh, thank you for your efforts and contributions over the years. Uh, we collect it from all sources and we, uh, we put it up and we share it. When we see good things, if you experience great things, send it to us and we'll post it on our website. We are happy to share stewardship resources. As uh, mentioned, we are doing trainings and webinars all summer long. They are free for you. Our next one is on June 5th, and it's about, um, it's about uh, recruiting your team. And a lot of that comes from work that uh, Bishop Dan Edwards out of Nevada did for us uh, a long time ago and helped us think through. So uh, TENS uses these great ideas that the church creates and we package them up and we give them back to you. Sign up for webinars, uh, look at our annual resources. Our website is here for you to give you training and support, not just for diocesan leadership, but stewardship leaders in your congregations as well. Our newsletter goes out every month. It's full of resources. Uh, and of course you can get to the trainings through that. So please encourage your stewardship folks at your congregations and your diocese to sign up. You can do that right on the homepage of our website by entering your email address and uh, we'll send you a monthly newsletter. I'll stop sharing my screen so we can go back and see each other. 
really the purpose of TENS is to bring people together. We take the network part of our name very seriously and uh, events like this, where we can get uh, together with a province uh, or we can get together with dioceses, we can get together with bigger entities. We all share ideas. Stewardship, everything has been tried once and perhaps many times, but when we share how our churches adapt our resources, we can get new ideas, try something new out. We'll be working on a couple of webinars this summer that really try to break us out of the mold. One of them is called Breaking Through the Pledge Plateau, really trying to look at folks who are consistent givers, but haven't changed their pledge in a while. So how can we adapt resources that we've used before, um, but package them in new ways and create new, uh, new ideas for folks? Our resources are free for all of you, as I said, and we really appreciate your membership and, uh, and how you work with us. We are a network. I'd love to answer any questions that you have about TENS, uh, what we do, what our materials are, or you know how you can have me virtually beam into your diocese to do training uh, at your diocese or in your congregations. We're always happy to do that. Are there any questions, any comments, any ideas? I've left you speechless. <laughs> Thank you, and thanks for your work. Stewardship is hard work. I want to applaud you for engaging it. It's often thankless because uh, you're, you're talking about money and church. We don't always like that. Uh, and so I appreciate the work that all of you do uh, on your diocesan commissions, in your own congregations, uh, in your province. This is really beautiful, hard, wonderful work. And I'm glad to see so many of you engaged in it. Thank you. Thank you, Davey. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, um, so, Bill McEwen, uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, it's, you're still there. Thank you. Uh, Bill McEwen is a member, as I said earlier, a member of the General Convention Interim Body, the Theology of Money. Uh, and um, as I remember, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong, you are you are joining us, you're a member from New York, which is Pro province two, did I guess, did I get that right? Um, and uh, we, were, we're, we weren't sure if we were gonna get the chair of the, of, the, uh, of the committee, but we're thrilled to have you, Bill. And I, um, we thought if maybe you would just give us a kind of a high end overview of what this, this uh, task force has been doing that ever since the uh, general convention of 2018. Uh, you, you've all had seen reading materials that will, that will educate you to the extent you have time on what, what that body has done in the blue book. But give us a high end. And also, Bill, if you have thoughts to share as we've finished building out this network, how the, the interim body would see uh, what relationship that we might be able to have to the work that you're doing, how, how that how that might work. So I'll let you take the, that the time that you need and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Can you all hear me all right? Mm -hmm. yep. I'm, I'm, I'm allegedly too soft spoken on the Zoom transmission so that I don't get heard. So I'm asking first. You all hear me? Very good. <clears throat> Thank you for inviting me. The chair of our task force, Evan Garner, could not attend, but he, I think, happily approved my attending in his place. Uh, the only one of you that I actually know that I can tell from looking in the pictures and the names is Moran. Uh, he's, on, he's in the lower right corner for me here. Uh, but I'm sure that I would be glad to meet any of you in person if we ever can get around to that. Uh, and talk with you in person. The task force, as you know, is, was appointed because of a resolution passed that it 
the 2018 General Convention. The task force was given a rather to, to us a little unusual, a rather unusual mandate. Basically, there were two directions given to us in two separate sections of the resolution adopted by convention. The first gave us a very broad mandate to explore what the church says and does about money, but very broadly stated, nothing specific about that. The second resolution was quite specific. It said, with respect to investing, do this, look into these three things. So when we came to do our work, the second task, which said, look into these three things was defined for us and we pursued that. The first one we had to figure out what to do. So our report has turned out to be in two parts. There's the general report of the whole task force, which addresses both subjects, the broad one and the specific one about investing. But because of the specificity of the investing assignment, we have a separate report addressing that assignment. And that is a supplemental report to the main report. And if you go to the Blue Book pages, you will see, you go to the task force and the first 20 pages, actually first 22 pages are the general report. And the next 80 some pages are the, are the supplemental report. I don't suppose any of you read the 100 pages that that adds up to before today, but uh, I invite you to do that. I invite you to do that. Uh, furthermore, I can say that the, uh, there will be a press release expected to be uh, published by the publication office two weeks from today on the 2nd of June, which will introduce the church at large to the supplemental report. Because the supplemental report has a specific set of issues to be addressed, that there's a press release to go out and point that out to people. So uh, when, you, when you see that press release, you see that your colleague Warren Wong is one of those who contributed to the press release. So for no other reason than, than his presence, you should read what it, what it said. Uh, so that's, that's the general structure of what we did. I was the convener of the group, the subcommittee that dealt with the investment part. So I am the one who knows most about the investment part. However, I am participated fully in the work of the task force and in the writing of the major report. So uh, I think I can read you one sentence from the principal report, report, which may sound familiar to you since you are so knowledgeable about churches, practices, and stewardship. At least I think this is a, is a good summary of what the, the, the report has to say. At this point in the life of the church, we have not done enough to articulate the common themes and to form our people in the way of financial discipleship. We have not done enough, but the church is not starting from scratch. We have resources, we have people committed, but we haven't done enough. So the major message I would think of the overall report is that we have not done enough. And we brought, we, we draw on two resources sort of empirical resources to get to this conclusion. One is for the general theme, we conducted a survey of people in the church, clergy and lay people. And then we were, it was distributed by Episcopal News Service for us. And we were very surprised to get 600 responses. And so that we have the results and we have the summary results in the report. The, I believe the report, can, you can actually get access to the, all, the, all the summaries if you want. So that's one resource that we took 
to Vanejo. We, we were able to conduct a survey and get 600 responses to people in the church to tell us what they thought about the church's theology of money. I think it's very, very, very interesting and it's summarized in our, in our cover report. Secondly, for the investment component, because we were given these three specific questions to address, and because they were practical questions, they were about how the church invests its money. It wasn't about what are the ideas of the church about its money, but what is, how, how does it actually do it? Then we interviewed church investors to find out how they practice those three elements of investing. So the second, second, empirical component is that we have in the supplemental report 15 stories. We have the story of fiscal relief and developments, investment activities in order to accomplish its relief and development mission. And we have the stories of seven parishes or congregations and seven dioceses in the US church how they have addressed investing in faith. So we have 15 stories and that's why we have 80 pages of report because every institution is given space so that we could tell its story. I also point out that those stories were, were, were written up by us based on information provided by them, but every institution reviewed the, the story about it and approved the text as public. So it is, in fact, the story of the institution. So I will stop there. Oh, we do have we do have proposed resolutions to offer through our report. I can I can mention what those are if you want, but I can also just answer questions or respond to comments. Hey, uh, Bill, uh, yeah. you have another friend on this call, Mike Penfield from uh, Diocese of Oregon. Well, I wondered if Mike's pad was Mike Penfield, but since it didn't, it said pad, not Penfield, I wasn't going to make a, an assumption I shouldn't. <clears throat> Hello, Mike. Mike and I have had many conversations, both on the telephone and through other means. And uh, just so you know, the Diocese of Oregon is one of those seven dioceses whose stories are told in the report. And Mike can correct me if I got anything wrong just now. You did a brilliant job on this, hey, Bill, and you know we're just so all so grateful. That was a lot of work that you put into this. It and, was a uh, lot of work. Yeah. It's come out really, really well. So thank you. Any any other questions or comments? What were the three What were the three questions uh, that you were asked to answer in, in involving investments? I will, I will read you, because it's the only way to do this, I'm afraid, exactly the words of convention, okay? Because we were guided by exactly what convention told us to do. With regard to investment beliefs, the task force should examine the following elements of responsible investing consistent with the church's faith and mission and here are the two key words, as practiced today by many institutional investors across the church, colon, and here's where the three are identified. But the key words there are as practiced, colon, one, applying ethical guidelines in investment selection and management. Two, shareholder activism. And three, investing for responsible social and environmental outcomes, as well as financial return. Now, those are, there's a lot of words there. And if you want me to try to unpack them, I will try to do that. But those are the three that we were assigned to do. And that's what we tried to do. I will tell you that we found, basically, in the end, we got 15 stories. And basically, everybody whose story is told does more or less all three of those things. 
is it was really a, a, a fantastic discovery that in going to look for what the church was doing, we found the church was doing what the General Convention asked us to look for. It was there. It, I sort of thought somebody was guiding the General Convention as it was preparing that resolution for us because when we went out to look, we found what they told us to find. We were very, well, pleasantly surprised in a way. Perhaps that's just the work of the spirit, generally, the church, and we shouldn't be too surprised, but we were. Thank you, Bill. Bill, uh, I'm not sure if this is a question or uh, just a comment. Would you, would the task force, as we, you know, we've got, what, 14, 15 months until general convention, should we uh, find some way to stay in touch with your work? Would you like to stay in touch with our work? Uh, can you just speak to that for a minute? I think it is an, I would anticipate that there will be a legislative process run through the General Convention Office involving deputies and bishops in the next few months. And, and at the last convention, the eight, in, in, in 18, of course, everything was done in person right there. And maybe that's the way it's gonna be done this time. I don't know, but I imagine people will be talking about legislation between now and the actual meeting of convention. And so I would look at this as the product of our task force does include recommendations for resolutions. And I would think it would be useful for you to acquaint yourself with those proposals and to, to think about them. And we'd be happy to come back and talk with you about them at a time when you were prepared because uh, I imagine the legislative process will probably address those recommendations. I also think there will be other recommendations coming from not, not within the task force report, but from other people who are interested in these subjects, including you. If you read the reports and have a, dif a different suggestion from the ones that we made, I think that's important to bring to the surface. Again, what the convention does is what the convention does, but there will be legislative committees, I imagine, that will process proposals, both those that are in, in, in documents prepared for convention and those that happen on the spot, so to speak. So I think you may want to make may want to support legislation that that is proposed, so to speak, by us, or you may want to propose your own legislation. And I think we would be glad to discuss those things with you okay. before the convention. Also, I imagine that some of us will be involved more directly in the legislative process when the convention committees start to work, and I think. I mean, Warren knows more than I do, but I think there will probably be a, as there was in, the, in 2018, there probably will be a, a convention legislative committee assigned to deal with the subjects that are in, within our, our, our report. Because our, our, our resolution that created the task force came out of a legislative committee. That was legislative committee number 18. I don't know, that's not a very imaginative name, but that's what they've called my number. And so there may be another one just like it. I mean, with similar, similar responsibilities, whatever it might be called. So I imagine we will be asked to provide resource to that, that committee if it wishes to have, have some resource. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. this, this is Warren speaking. So it is committee 18, it would be called stewardship and social responsible investing. And uh, again, I signed up for it and I hope to uh, return to that in some capacity. As, and then uh, I'm hoping, uh, besides Peter and uh, Ron, are there any other deputies or alternates here on the, in the call today? If not, you'll, you'll know that, you know, Peter, is a deputy from the Diocese of Northern California. I'm a deputy from the Diocese of California. Ron is an, an alternate from the Diocese of California. So we can, if you, if you have concerns, 
we can bring that forward and share that. And I think it's important to, uh, to, to be mindful of what's proposed in these A resolutions. And in a quick roadmap is, there are four different types of resolutions that go to convention. An A resolution is usually put together out of a blue book report by one of the interim bodies or bodies of the, uh, the church. The B resolutions are resolutions crafted by bishops. The D resolutions are crafted by deputies. And the C resolutions are crafted by diocesan conventions or provincial synods. So when you have your diocesan conventions and they say, be it resolved that the 80th general convention, we ask them to adopt this. And then after that carries on and is filed with the general convention office. But right now in this blue book report, they, these are the A resolutions that came out of these interim bodies. And we'll be happy to roadmap to you, with you during the course of the year as we know more of. And also we'd love to hear what's coming out of your diocesan conventions or deputies that you think we should hear so we can speak to it and respond to it. So that's, I just wanna provide some background information about sure. that. Yes, that's consistent, but I didn't realize that 18 would continue to be called 18, but I guess that's the, the, the once in a future name of the committee. Uh, I, I personally will say to you all that if you, I would be glad to be a resource for you in your current group or in your diocesan homes, if you wish, as long as I have time and energy uh, to help you deal with anything that comes out of the report of the task force that I can help you with. But I don't want to volunteer for anything until I hear more from you. Okay. Well, one of the things I'm going to take from what you said, Bill, and we're gonna, we're going to need to move on here in a minute, but um, that we I you know people just had a very brief time to use that link that was in the agenda to look at at that hundred uh, page report, and probably most of us haven't had a chance to do that. We can certainly at our next meeting have that done i'm guessing one of the reasons we get to shorten convention in july of 22 is because we're actually going to start the work of convention this fall in november i think uh and so exactly what that work will be and how it gets done with we'll, we'll need to find out later but uh thank you thank you for by, by the way for updating us for re reviewing that and we'll just commit to reading that material thoughtfully by our next meeting thank you again and, and if you keep me informed about your next meeting. I don't promise that I'll attend your next meeting, but if you invite me, I may very well agree. Okay, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> thank you. So speaking of, of next meeting, and I wanna remind everybody something I put in the chat a while ago, uh, and if you don't have time in the chat, please email me. I have, for my lifetime in management and, and meet, running meetings and things, I always, I'm sincerely interested to know if you if you if things that we did today we that you were pleased with that you think we did well you know let us know it's always nice to get a few compliments on the other hand if there are things that we could do better um we want to know that as well so if you're there's no time in the chat today but please let us know give us some feedback so that we can improve future meetings Speaking of which, we talked about this network getting together on an approximate quarterly basis, a 90 minute meeting once a quarter and uh, all on Zoom. And it'll be, it'll stay on Zoom given our geographic differences. Um, and, and thinking about a next meeting, um, I have had folks say to me, if we're gonna do a fall meeting, could we do it just before the fall, before the fall cranks up in the church calendar and things get really over the top crazy? I'm wondering if, if this Wednesday afternoon seems to have worked for most of you. Uh, what about Wednesday afternoon, the 25th, 25, I think it's 25 of August. Uh, and or if that's really bad for folks, uh, would entertain some uh, some suggestions on another meeting. Another time, I mean. 
eight eight twenty five. I, I looks like a thumb up there from from Dave. <laughs> eight twenty five at the same time, and uh, and we'll we'll of course send you lots of reminders. I had a couple of uh, I had feedback from multiple people today about the about uh, having trouble finding the Zoom link. So I know it was there, and Davey was good to send it out. But we'll take that as feedback that we for the next meeting maybe we knew, need to do a a reminder with the Zoom link, like say twenty four hours in advance or some other way to make sure you don't have that problem again. Apologies, uh, apologies for that. Um, what I think so. What I think then in in closing today, what we'll do, we have a lot of information to pour over. I want to reiterate again something I said at the beginning. We're going to look to put together a small steering committee, probably three or four people, and um, um, that committee will really be a help a help to me. I, I I neither can I nor do I want to do everything. Uh, I'd, I'd like some some other ideas and perspectives on, on what we're doing here. We are going to put together, gather the information we have today from who is doing, where we have gifts, where we have passions, where we have skills, and for those areas of hopes and dreams, where should we focus? If you're willing to serve on a, on a small steering committee, and I'm not trying to add a lot of meeting time to your schedule, I'm guessing in addition to one meeting of the larger group per quarter, we might meet one other time as a steering committee for, we could probably limit it to 60 minutes instead of 90. If you're willing to do that, please send me an email. Don't make me beg. Uh, we'd like to have a small group to, to help with that. And um, uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Um, any closing thoughts? Uh, Bishop Rickle has agreed to pray us out. Any any other comments, questions, closing thoughts before we uh, we adjourn? I, I have one, if I may. Yes, Peter. Uh, I, I was just impressed with the worldly experience of, of many of the participants in the meeting. There, there's just a, a wealth of, of experience of the people on this meeting. And uh, I'm looking forward to kind of tapping into it so that I, we can up our game in Northern Cal and in some of our more rural parishes in Northern Cal. You know, I, I see where we could, so many of our smaller parishes are struggling from the financial uh, aspect, but they're doing such marvelous work in their communities. And uh, if we can just elevate the ability to talk about money and and what these resources can do for their mission uh, you know i'm i'm very confident uh that with the collective wisdom of what i've heard of many of the people on this this committee i'm looking forward to mining the, their knowledge and and maybe having davy help me get it out to uh, some of these smaller parishes thanks peter thanks peter All right, thank you again for taking this 90 minutes out of your Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Bishop Rickle, would you pray us out? Thank you all and thank you, Ron, for pulling us together too. Appreciate you very much. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy One, we thank you for this time that we've shared. We thank you for the church that we share. We are grateful for your constant presence in our lives, and we know it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single piece. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wraths and sorrows and give peace to your church, peace among the nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all until August 25 at three o'clock and we will be in touch. And again, if you're willing to help me on the steering committee, I'd love to hear from you. Have a good rest of your afternoon.